Hi everyone, my name is George and I'm an amateur astrophotographer. In this video I will tell you about a comet called C2022 E3 ZDF that should be visible with an aided eye in a few weeks. I will explain when and where you have to look if you want to spot this object and share my latest picture of this comet. If this video will be helpful or interesting to you, I would like to ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that the YouTube will promote this video better and I really appreciate your support guys. Comet C 2022 E3 ZTF was discovered on March 2nd last year by the Zwicky Transient Facility. It is an astronomical survey that tracks the night sky in order to detect new objects or astronomical events. On discovery date, the comet was really a faint object and it had 17.3 magnitude. After orbital calculations, astronomers figured that the orbital period of this comet is about 50,000 years, which is a lot, although it is shorter than the 80,000 year orbital period of the comet Leonard that we observed last year. At the time of filming this video, you can observe this comet using a binocular or a telescope already. On January 12th, the comet passed its closest approach to the Sun and now it's going away from it. In a few weeks on February 1st, the comet will reach its closest approach to our planet and it will pass at a distance of 0.28 astronomical units from us and there is the high chance that at this time the comet will be visible with the naked eye. Comets are really unpredictable objects and it's really hard to make a precise prediction about the comet brightness. So far the brightness of this comet is developing in accordance with the calculations, which is a good sign because that means that we have a higher chance to see this comet with the naked eye. Now let's talk about when and where you have to look if you want to see this comet. These days you can see this comet early in the morning, uh, something around after 3 am when it rises high enough in the sky for good observations. In a few weeks by the February 1st when uh, this comet should reach its maximum brightness, we will be able to see this comet in the evening skies. On the screen you can see a short animation of the comet's movement during the next few weeks. If you are a beginner and do not have any experience in locating objects in the sky, you will have a great opportunity to see the ZTF comet easily on January 26. The fact you also want to consider about comet observations is that by the end of January we're gonna have a bright moon in the sky that will be interfering with the comet observations by adding some natural light pollution. On the other hand, you can just wait a little till the moon goes under the horizon and enjoy the comet view under the darker sky. By the way, if you do comet observations on January 30, you will see a conjunction between the moon and the planet Mars. On the date of the closest approach of the ZTF comet to Earth, the Polaris star will be the great reference point to find this comet in the sky. Now let's actually step outside and I'm going to show you how I take a picture of the ZTF comet and I'm also going to try to show you how the night sky looks like so that you have some ideas of what you can expect and I really hope that this part of the video will be helpful to you when you'll be doing your comet observations. Okay, so it is morning of January 16th, the local time is uh, 4.12 a.m. in the morning and I'm taking pictures of the Comet C2022 and eventually the battery in my receiver just died. So when I was filming this video it was like minus 5 degrees Celsius and usually I use the wireless system from Rode and I did realize that at minus 5 the battery just died. But anyway, when I was filming the video, I basically was sharing some information about the equipment I was using and also I showed the single exposure of the Comet ZTF. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's talk about the equipment first. Uh, I was using Skywatcher 150 PDS. The main imaging camera was ZWO 2600MC Pro uh, and the sensor of this camera was cooled to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Of course I used guiding while capturing the comet and the whole setup was mounted on Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Uh, now let's actually look at the single exposure of the comet that I got. On the screen you can see the comet C2022 E3 ZTF. It is a 90 second exposure, I got something around like 4 a.m. in the morning. On the picture we can definitely see the core of the comet right over here 
and the two tails of the comet. So the first one is the dust tail right over here, the bigger one. And the other tail is the gas tail right over here. It is really faint on the single exposure. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, you might want to make sure that the resolution on this video is set to its maximum so that uh, you can see the gas tail for sure. And that's basically how the comet appeared in the morning of January 16. So I hope you got an idea of what you can expect when shooting the comet. So this picture was taken in the focal length of 750 millimeters. And if it's a lower focal length, the comet will appear smaller, of course. And if it's a higher focal length, the comet will appear bigger on the sensor. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to find the comet C2022 E3ZDF in the night sky on two dates, January 26 and February 1st. So I've picked these two dates because I think that on January 26, every person will be able to find a comet in the night sky. And on February 1st, uh, the comet should reach its maximum brightness and it also will be really easy to find the comet in the night sky. So right now you're looking at my telescope that was capturing the comet in the morning of January 16. And, uh, uh, I was filming this part of the video around 5 a.m. in the morning. Let's pretend for the purposes of this video that it is January 26. You will need to use the little dipper in order to find the comet in the night sky. And in the northern hemisphere we have two dippers, let's call it that way. We have a big dipper and a little dipper, both of them are asterisms. And I want to start this part with basically explaining you how you can find out whether you're looking at the little deeper or you're looking at the big deeper. First thing you want to do on January 26 is when you step outside, you need to look at the north part of the sky. And uh, right now in the video, my camera is pointing to big deeper, and uh, this is an asterism, and I'm highlighting it right now using a green pointer. And uh, the thing is that we can find little deeper using stars of the big deeper. So uh, you need to take these two stars on the left and make a line that goes downwards. And uh, on this line you will see a bright star that is called Polaris. And Polaris is a part of the Little Deeper Asterism. Basically right now I'm uh, highlighting Little Deeper Asterism. And the fact that you also want to consider is that I was filming this video at 5 a.m. in the morning, but you can observe comet on January 26 or around 10 or 11 p.m. already. And uh, the orientation of Little and Big Deeper in the sky will be different on that date. And right now on the screen, uh, I just posted a screenshot from a Stellarium app, and uh, basically you can look how these two asterisms will be located in the sky. So all you want to do on January 26, after you found a little deeper, is take these two stars and make a line from them. On this line, you will see comet ZDF. And here is again screenshot from Stellarium app that shows how the comet will be located in the sky on January 26. Now let's pretend uh, we stepped outside in February 1st and actually on this date all you need to do is just locate Polaris star in the sky. You already know how to do that and uh, ideally you want to start the observation something maybe around 9.30 p.m. on your local time and uh, if you observe at this time you will see that comet appears exactly above the Polaris. So all you have to do is just to make a line from the Polaris uh, all the way up and you will see the comet in the sky. All right, guys, I really hope that the final part of the video was helpful to you. And now you know how to locate the Comet C2022 E3 ZDF in the night sky, at least on the dates that I just covered. If you have any questions about this comet or locating this comet in the sky, uh, leave them in the comment section below. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and also consider sharing this video with your friends or family members. And then I have a final picture of the comment that I got in the morning on January 16. I really hope to see you in the future videos and until then, clear skies.